Now, the other aspect of PCOS that I want to emphasize on is the management of infertility. I will not be talking in detail about ovulation induction, IUI or IVF or the procedure per se. But I want to talk about the recommendation as regard the use of which ovulation induction agents to use. How to use those drugs? What are the protocols? I mean, that is a separate lecture altogether where we talk about ovulation induction particularly, right? And the drug details and the mechanism of actions of those drugs, it deserves a whole separate lecture altogether. So, we're not going to mix it. Here, we are only going to talk about what are the latest recommendations as regard the treatment of infertility is concerned. So, when you have a woman with PCOS who wants to conceive, let's start some with very basic, okay? Obviously, she has the option of ovulation induction, okay? But think about it, will she always need ovulation induction? I mean, she can achieve with lifestyle intervention also, uh, you know, regularity in cycles, uh, correction of her ovulatory dysfunction. That is also possible. Her metabolic profile, her metabolic parameters can also be better. So, spontaneous ovulatory cycles can also resume and it is not necessary that all women with PCOS will always need ovulation induction drugs. Of course, if they, they have been trying and they've been not able to conceive and they are dealing with infertility, then of course, ovulation induction is definitely a lot option for them. The other important point to note here is that there will always be modifiable risk factors which have to be targeted pre-pregnancy and actually to help with conception. So, lifestyle intervention is important. In fact, a major part of management even for those who are wanting to conceive like reducing the weight bmi needs to be targeted no to smoking no to alcohol right and there can be pre existing metabolic disturbances which need to be targeted or impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes could have been discovered. So, the, all these need to be addressed for good fertility outcome, right? It is to be addressed for helping to conceive better conception outcomes and even after conception, pregnancy outcomes will improve. Therefore, see, importance of putting lifestyle intervention in place, it will take time, right? So, you have to put it in early. You have to sensitize the patient early. You have to emphasize and counsel on the effect of, let's say, you know, excess weight gain if it happens. How will that affect her chances of conception? How will that affect her pregnancy outcome if she conceives? Even excessive weight gain will also affect her outcome of conception or chances of getting pregnant. Even if we were trying artificial reproductive techniques, even if we were subjecting her to ovulation induction, IUI or IVF, then also her chances of conception become much better. Chances of live birth become much better if she is putting lifestyle intervention in place and if she's keeping a healthy lifestyle, as simple as that, right? So, early initiation of these interventions is very, very important. Now, as regards ovulation induction, what are the recommendations? The recommendations say that letrozole should be the first line pharmacological treatment for ovulation induction in infertile and ovulatory women with PCOS with no additional infertility factors. See, this extra line with no other infertility factors is added here. Why? Because if there are already other infertility factors like for example, male infertility, for example, tubal factor infertility, then one would not consider, one would consider maybe different treatment regimes. One would consider IVF directly rather than ovulation induction. So, that is why this extra line has been added here, right? So, letrozole should be the first line pharmacological treatment for ovulation induction 
in infertile anovulatory women when the only issue is anovulation basically that now look at the next recommendation see this particular recommendation is a strong recommendation based on high quality evidence but look at what it says next letrozole should be used rather than clomiphene in place of clomiphene because you know both these drugs letrozole and clomiphene both these drugs they are first line drugs actually both of them right however with clomiphene we do see instances of clomiphene resistance we do see uh, ovulation happening but uh, you know conception rates are not there so there are issues with clomiphene also which we will discuss when we talk about these ovulation induction drugs in detail but know this that should letrozole be used in place of clomiphene now look at this what they say letrozole should be used rather than clomiphene in women with pcos with an ovulatory infertility and no other factors to improve ovulation clinical pregnancy and live birth rates it's a strong recommendation but they are saying based on very low quality evidence so what do these two recommendations mean for me i think these two recommendations would mean that yes okay letrozole should be the first line pharmacological treat i believe yes letrozole and clomiphene both are first line treatments both are first line uh, drugs i would prefer letrozole in place of clomiphene right so it should be used rather than clomiphene because it does tend to improve ovulation it does tend to improve clinical pregnancy and live birth rates so with letrozole there is superior ovulation rate clinical pregnancy rate and live birth rate most of the good quality evidence is for improving live birth rate if you compare letrozole and clomiphene there is no difference in multiple pregnancy rate and miscarriage rate that's also something important to note so i think both drugs are fine first line agents but given a choice letrozole should be preferred and current evidence demonstrates no differences in fetal abnormality rates between letrozole clomiphene induced ovulation induction achieved conceptions or natural conception right so the concerns of teratogenicity they have not been substantiated by the various studies that have been done or conducted so there is no evidence that there is any difference in congenital abnormality rates of the fetus when using these ovulation induction drugs so keep these important informations in mind the details of how letrozole works how clomiphene works we're going to discuss it separately all together